Jordy here for Cinecom.net and in this video I'm going to show you some new features within Premiere Pro CC 2015 that most people actually don't tell you. Because if you're like me and many other Premiere users, you want to read about the new features. And like they all tell you how great the new Morph Cut transition is. Well, here are five very small new features which make, in my opinion, a big difference. So I want to share those with you. And the first thing is that Premiere now allows you to switch between uh, workspaces very easily with this new panel up here. Now these workspaces just come from your window menu workspaces right here. And as you know, you can also create custom workspaces and you can now just switch between them very easily. Now I must be honest by saying that I actually never switched between workspaces before until now that they are so easy accessible. And they've also done a great job with these three workspaces right here. The first one is the assembly workspace and it actually makes your project panel which holds your clips uh, very big now. You can see lots of clips in here and also big thumbnails, which is great to assemble everything to your timeline. And like once you've done that, we can switch over to editing, which is like the normal workspace as we're used to. And then finally the new color correction uh, workspace with the Lumetri color correction tools. And this is also something new, but I'm guessing that you've already read about that or even worked with it. So this is the first new feature that I really like. It's very small, but it really makes a big difference. I've really noticed that editing now goes much faster by just using these three workspaces. So let's go back to assembly now, because I want to show you something new here as well. Now, as you can see, I've got three clips in here of some golfers. Now, always while I'm looking through my clips, I always find some clips in here that aren't suitable for my edit. So what I usually do is just I select them and I delete them. But then afterwards I noticed, oh damn it, I actually need that clip. So here's a great new feature, we can now hide clips within the project panel. And we can do that by just right clicking on any of these clips and say hide right here. And now that clip is hidden, but it's actually still in my project panel. And we can also show these hidden clips again by right clicking again in some empty space right here and say view hidden and that will show that clip again. Now when I'm going to right click on that again, you will see that height is checked on. So if I'm going to check that back off, it's now not hidden anymore. You also see that now when I'm going to uncheck the view hidden, it will still stay there. So this way I don't have to re-import those clips after I've deleted them. I can just hide those clips. Now when you are dealing with lots of clips in here, it actually takes some time to each time right click on them and say hide. So what we can do is when we're going to head over to edit, say keyboard shortcuts, and I'm going to search in here after hide, we can actually find that feature in here and we can assign a shortcut to it. I've defined Ctrl H to it to hide that clip. So I'm just gonna press OK, and when I select that clip now and press Ctrl H, you will see now that that clip is hided. It's not gone, it's just hide it. So that was the second small feature, which I think is pretty big actually. All right, on to the next thing, and that is in the editing part. So I'm just going to press on editing, and what I'm gonna do now is drag a title file that I've created inside my timeline, like so. And the title says, let's go golf. Now when I select this title file and head over to effects controls, open up the motion tab, right here we can change like the position, the scale, etc. Now we can also find a rotation property in here, and when I'm going to change that, you'll see that the text will rotate, but it's actually rotating from an anchor point in the middle, because when we're going to select motion up here, you can actually see where that anchor point is located, and it's actually rotating around that anchor point. Now, if you want the title to rotate around its own axis, in one of the previous versions, we actually had to change the anchor points through these properties right here. So we actually had to align it like so, and then we had to reposition it. We could drag that back to the bottom left, and then we could rotate that. But it's now different within Premiere CC 2015. And for that, I'm just going to reset everything because right now, when you have the motion property selected, we can actually just grab the anchor point and move that 
in the middle of our title. And now we can rotate around that axis. So we don't have to change the anchor point in here and then reposition that title anymore. We can just visually take that anchor point and drag that to any position that we want to. So that was the third feature that I really like. It's a small feature again, but it makes a big difference in my opinion. Now let's head over to the next feature, which is not really a feature, but just something great to know, and that is in the color correction tab. Now for that, I'm first going to drag a clip to my timeline, like that, because we need something to perform our color grading on. And I'm going to open up the color grading workspace. There we go. And I'm going to select the clip that I want to perform the color grading on. And so right in here on the right side now, we can change some colors of that clip. Now let's just do some basic color grading. I'm just going to add some color temperature, increase the exposure, some contrast, decrease the highlight. Just going to do some stuff. It doesn't really matter because what I actually want to show you now is that how can we now see the before and the after of what we've done? What we can do is enable and disable the Lumetri effect like so, but that requires clicking in another panel. It's not really user friendly. So we actually want to assign a shortcut to that. And you know, it's perfectly possible. So to do that, I'm going to head back to edit, say keyboard shortcuts. And in here, we're actually going to type in Lumetri. And we should see it somewhere right here. Panels, Lumetri, color panel. And right here it says bypass Lumetri color effects. And that actually just means show or hide the effects which the Lumetri effect does. And I have assigned the zero key on my keyboard to that. Now again, by default, no keys will be assigned to it, but you can do so right in here. So I'm just going to press OK. And as you've seen, I've assigned the zero key on my keyboard. So when I'm going to press that, hold it down, you can see the before, and when I'm going to leave that key again, you can see the after. So right here now, you can very easily switch between the before and the after. And folks, that brings me to the last feature, which is actually more of a bug fix. Oh yes, Premiere CC 2015 came with some bugs, and to show you that, I'm going to open up a new project. There we go. Now this here is a project which has some more clips within it. And I've chosen this project because the bug only occurs when you have some more clips in your timeline. Now here's what's going to happen. I can actually play this very smoothly, as you can see. But at the point where I'm going to trim something in this timeline, Premiere Pro's user interface will just freeze out. Let me show you that. I'm just going to trim this logo up here, like that. There we go, and there we go. Premiere Pro has now been frozen. As you can see, you cannot play anything anymore. Also, the play button here doesn't work. Uh, also, I'm going to change my uh, interface right here. You can see that weird things are happening over here. You know, Premiere Pro has just totally, completely frozen. And you can wait for a long time, nothing will happen. Same thing goes for when I'm going to close right Premiere Pro right here. You will now see that Premiere Pro just won't shut down. You see, it's not responding, it doesn't do anything. Now, this is a huge bug within Premiere Pro, and I have found the solution to it. But first, we actually have to press Ctrl, to Delete, Start the Task Manager, and just really shut down that process, Adobe Premiere Pro, End Process. There we go. And now we can reopen Premiere. And to bypass this bug, I'm actually going to disable a feature which is enabled by default. In your timeline, we've got this Tools menu, and when I'm going to click on it, you will see this setting right here. Composite preview during trim. That means it will show a preview while you are trimming that clip inside your program monitor. And that's the thing that is occurring inside your program monitor, which is making that bug. So I'm just going to disable that. And once I've done that, you can now trim as much as you want to without Premiere Pro going to freeze, as you can see right now. All right, folks, and that was it for this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, some small things and a bug fix, but I think those things make a huge difference when you're going to step into CC 2015. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you folks soon.